Hey dude, it's Thub, and I'm glad you're here, because today I've got a project I'm really, really excited about. I've got this stack of aluminum rims, but they've still got tires on them. So if you've seen in previous videos, the old method I used to use to get the, the rubber off of the rims involved a box of muffins. Now, of course, you could do it the right way, removing the valve stem, letting the air out, and then driving over the, the back end of it with a, a heavy truck, or maybe using a jack underneath something to, um, to break the bead, and then using a couple... I forget what they call them, but heavy, heavy pieces of metal to wrench the tire off. And that just sounds like a lot of time and effort to me. It would take all afternoon, I'm sure of it. So, I've been giving it some thought, and I think I've come up with a way that should work a lot better and a lot faster. To put it briefly, it involves these. Now, obviously, this method does not involve saving the tire. So, if that's important to you, you're going to have to put in a little more time and effort than I'm about to. Um, this is for scrappers. Now this is an experimental method. I'm not sure if this is going to work. There's a couple challenges when uh, going through a tire and I'm hoping the reciprocating saw is up for the job. First up is the main construction of the tire. It's not just layers of rubber. It's got um, a fabric with a whole bunch of wire interwoven to give it extra strength and just keep it from tearing apart at high speeds. The second challenge, and the one that's got me kind of scratching my head, is the the bead, the braided cable that runs on the inside of both the edges of the tire that actually hold it on. That's the part that makes it difficult to, to get the thing off by hand. So, I fitted the saw with the metal cutting blade, the torch, and I'm just hoping this has what it takes to get through the entire tire. So, fingers crossed that we only need to use one tool. That'll make it real fast. Now this job is going to be messy, so I've laid down a drop sheet to catch all the little pieces of rubber that are going to be flying everywhere. It's also going to be kind of dangerous if the tire starts moving, so you need to keep that secure somehow. There's a million ways to do that. I've decided to ratchet strap it to a log. Alright, let's do this thing. And remember, safety first. Oh, and I'm through. So getting through the tire is easy. Now how about that beat? actually frickin' worked! Now this here's what I'm talking about. You can see all the braided wire up there, then down at the sidewall it gets weak, and then down here it's a thick bundle of ends of steel. And of course it's destroyed my blade. Pretty much flattened out all the teeth. But we've got plenty of opportunity to try different methods, so I've got something else in mind to get through that. Next one. I'm not gonna bother taking out the valve stem. Pierced. Looks good. Now we're taking the bolt cutters in here. That's where we're at. Another modification of the method. Now I'm just using screwdrivers to hold the bead away. See if I can cut through this like this. Ew. Look what was in that tire. The color of a grape freezy. It's everywhere. Alright, after much trial and error, I would like to share with you what I've determined to be the easiest way to get the rubber off of the rim without a tire shop. Oh, and this is the first one that I haven't actually... Uh, popped to get the air out. I'm hoping that's not a problem. We're gonna find out together. So, reciprocating saw. Start on the sidewall first. It cuts like butter. Now make sure you use the uh, back plate and the leverage action to get the most strength out of your cut. Once you get around to the other side, well, you're gonna turn and cut straight out. Ah! 
Same on the other side. Take that flap and just kind of fold it out of your way like that. Now you got access to the bead. Take your angle grinder. As soon as you stop seeing sparks, you're through the bead. Try not to breathe in those fumes. I know they smell delicious, but it's probably not good for you. Maybe there's a little bit left over. No big deal. And your tire's free. Now this does mean you're gonna have to have an angle grinder and some sort of reciprocating saw. But I have never seen needing more power tools as a bad thing. If anyone's curious, the compact M18 battery went through about three tires before it died on the reciprocating saw. Now, my final, I'm not gonna call it a tip, this is really more of a reminder, just make darn sure you're removing any of the weights, as well as any plastic spacer rings, and finally the valve stems. Because of course it would be super frustrating to put all that effort in and they get half as much money as you should be because you didn't take all the bits off. Plus, these weights are typically lead, so you can add that to your pile of batteries. Now, that's only half the story, isn't it? So let's load these up and follow through on this mission. I know you all want to see the money. You can't really see. I'm going to put this towel here because it would be really disappointing to hit a bump and smash that window. This is definitely a tad ridiculous. What? I know, I know, it's not ideal. Everybody's squished. But we managed to fit it all. Now, if anybody has any better suggestions for faster, easier ways to get rubber off of tires, please comment down below. Now, of course, there's two steps to this process. Yes, I want to bring the aluminum in and get some money, but we can't just leave the tires on the side of the road. I mean, I guess we could, but that'd be... Uh, that's not what we're going to do. So, the city of Calgary has three different landfills, and their hours are staggered, um, but they all have a, um, a, a drop-and-go, or whatever the heck they call it, uh, at the gate. So you can just... If you have a small amount of stuff, you don't have to pay an extra fee, you just show up, dump your stuff and go, and they have, and as long as you have 12 tires or less, you can just drop those off and move about your merry way. So, that's what we're here to do. Stick to the script and say your lines and keep your gas safe. Which trail is doing next it out, I'm just accepting. There we go. I got way more space and everybody's happy. Okay, this guy's not happy. He's actually enjoying being like, having a little cubby just cut out for him. I get it. You know what else I get? Scrap rims. Let's bring these in. There we are. What's going on today, boys? Woo. It's a big pile of big piles. Well, you know how this works. I do not. No, you. Okay, well, you guys know how this works. We're not allowed to film here. So I'm gonna hand back to you with what we end up with. Who's excited? I'm excited. Are you excited? Yes. Are you excited? What Tight. is excited? And we're back. I found some other stuff while I was out too. But I'll run through that in a different video because that's not really what today's video is about. Seven aluminum rims added up to a total of 132 pounds at 70 cents a pound. That made me 92 bucks. I think that reciprocating saw is going to pay itself off in no time. Honestly, though, if you know a better way to get the rubber off, let me know. That, it was the experimenting that took a long, long time. Well, I said what I came here to say. 
You guys make sure you leave it better than you found it when you're out there doing the thing. Scared.